Broadcasting live from the Subaru of Gwinnett Studios in Atlanta, it's time for On the Money. Presented by Embassy National Bank. Now, here's your host, Joe Moss. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this week's edition of On the Money, the number one small business podcast on Business Radio X. And I love to say that every time. So, um, And thank you, Mike, for being our fine producer and getting us involved in this. The show is sponsored by Embassy National Bank, and we discuss topics designed to help small business succeed because Embassy is proud of how we help small business. I'm Joe Moss, your moderator, and I'm also president of Embassy National Bank. And uh, we come to you live from the uh, global broadcast studios of uh, Subaru Gannett. Subaru Gwinnett. Uh, what a wonderful facility. And today we're going to be talking about, I don't know what we're going to talk about today. Well, I know it's going to be along the line of uh, music and achievement and the industry and uh, how to live your life and some other things because we have a, a spectacular guest with us. Uh, we've got Joey Stuckey, who is the owner and president of Joey Stuckey Music and the Shadow Sound Studios. Uh, down in uh, Macon, Georgia. So, Jody, welcome. A pleasure. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. And um, let me just tell you about uh, Joey. Joey is an award-winning blind guitarist, songwriter, singer, composer, producer, radio and television personality, music columnist, educator, and sound engineer. Uh, he is also the official music ambassador for his hometown of Macon, Georgia, and that says a lot given the Almond Brothers are from Macon. Absolutely, man. We we are very proud to have the Almond Brothers, and of course Otis Redding and Little Richard are some some hometown heroes as well. And uh, I heard a story about the guy that discovered the Almond Brothers. Um, yeah, he was uh, going into a barber shop, and apparently the Almond Brothers were playing in the back room. <laughs> And um, the guy said, well, who is that back there? He said, oh, it's just the brothers. They're, they're just coming here every, af every afternoon and play. It's amazing how much their music has reached so many people and, and just how, how amazing they were at communication, which is really what music is when you get right down to it. And it's interesting, too, because my dad uh, worked with Jimmy Carter and his, and his administration, and the Almond Brothers were, the, were a huge part of that campaign. So they've done a lot of things in music. They've done a lot of things in politics. They're a pretty amazing force of, of music. It's amazing. Yeah, and it's, they were huge. They, they pioneered an entire music genre. Oh, indeed. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm always amazed by folks like that. In fact, I saw something um, about uh, Muscle Shoals. Yeah. And they wanted to record them differently. Or whoever, no, someone turned them down when they first got there. <laughs> and then uh, someone else grabbed them. And then, uh, um, you know, th obviously the first guy regretted turning them down. Yeah. He said nobody wanted to hear a bunch of guys jam. You know, it, it's amazing. Th this is why, to me, you should always follow your heart, always follow your instinct. It's always right. Because it's amazing how many stories there are like that where people go, oh, you can't, you can't do that or you shouldn't do that or that's not music. And, you know, music is this amazing, powerful thing that really has no boundaries. And there's a similar story of, uh, you know, when, when the Beatles were recording Abbey Road, they had everything was very precise and you had to have the kick drum mic exactly so far back from the kick drum and all these different things. And the Beatles were not happy with one of the recordings they were getting. And so one of the sort of second engineers who wasn't famous yet uh, just went in there and took the kick drum mic and shoved it in the kick drum. And now that's how we do it. <laughs> you know, well, so it's amazing. Um, I, I, you know, just talking to you, just, it's just absolutely amazing. Let me add that uh, he, he plays a lot of different styles. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, a rocker with Jeff Beck. Indeed. Wes Montgomery, a jazzer. Yeah. And uh, sings anywhere from uh, Mel Torme, the uh, crooner kind of style, to Greg Allman, which That's is right. a nice bluesy style. Yeah. I, you know, I just love music. And I, 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 I feel about music two different ways. The first thing is that you do have to kind of, much as I hate labels for music, I think music, as I said, is this amazing, indefinable, powerful thing. But much as I hate that, you do have to figure out who your audience is. Uh, so you do have to kind of label things. But I, I just love to play music. I love country. I love rock. I love classical. I love jazz. That's the blessing of being a, a recording engineer and producer because I get to play so many different styles of music to help 
you know, as a session musician, whether it's on bass or guitar or whatever, to help my clients, you know, reach their goals. And then I can do just whatever I want for my music. And, if, you know, and, and, and I've learned over the years that instead of uh, sort of trying to uh, pro- brand myself as a specific, you know, specific style, what I've started doing is just marketing each album differently and then having an overarching brand that's me. And I think people, if you like the jazz, you're going to like the rock and so forth. It, it's kind of like, you know, Harry Connick Jr. has, he has his, you know, he has his funky band, he has his electric band, he has Show his... Show band. Yeah, and he's got his big brass band, you know, that's real New Orleans. So it, it's, it's that kind of idea that I just, I just go where inspiration takes me. I think as long as you do that, people will be receptive and, and enjoy what you're trying to do. Well... I want to, you know, this show is about helping small business, and and we're going to, we need to cover a little bit of that up front. Absolutely. I I did uh, write down two things that you've already said that a small business entrepreneur or owner should take to heart in, and that is follow your passion. In other words, if you're, if you think you're on the right path, don't let the negativity push you off of that into something uh, that you're not comfortable with. Right. Um, stick to what you're comfortable with and what you're sure of. And, and um, the other thing is y- you mentioned know your audience. Yes. Uh, it's just like know your customer. you got to know who you're going to be marketing to, what their needs are, what their wants are. And as you mentioned, um, even though you have a certain style that you like, you're also y- – you don't mind trying to adapt reasonably to another audience style. Right. I mean, the thing about that is – I mean, you're, you're absolutely correct – and it, it applies to business in general, but I think you, you, you should be flexible. Uh, there's a wonderful military saying that says, uh, no great plan withstands contact with the enemy. And I've taken that sort of mantra, and, and I use it in my business because just because I have a good plan that makes sense and sounds like it's good and, you know, I run the numbers, everything looks good, by the time we actually interact with people who are dynamic and not static and who – change you know we're constantly evolving uh in socially uh and and in business and all these sort of things you know sometimes just because a good plan doesn't work doesn't mean you're doing the wrong thing you just need to be flexible and and be able to try and do something different so that's kind of with me you know if 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 i'm working for a client that uh you know needs country music then i'm i'll give them country sure uh, and, and 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 you know one of the things i'd like to mention joe that i think is really important to the business owners out there listening is this whole thing. I have two, two uh, degrees that I went for when I was in college. One was music composition. The other was marketing. And uh, the, the marketing degree has served me really well in, in being able to do music full time because I've figured out ways to generate income. And one of the things I like to talk about is no matter what kind of business you are and no matter what kind of budget you have, uh, audio branding is an amazing tool. Um, lots of companies do it these days. Like Everybody knows the classic NBC thing, right? Dum right. dum dum. Yeah. Uh, same thing with like McDonald's. Ba 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 ba. Right. That's that whole. That's that little thing that McDonald's thing. You know. So so. Everybody, you know, or for us golf fans, the PGA Tour has course. its own brand. Yeah, absolutely. NFL has its own. It does. It th- and that's what that has some NFL has some great music. Right. Uh, and Carrie Underwood, what a singer. I mean, she's she does some great music for that show. And of course, Fox Sports in general has their own uh, theme song. Um, it's a great tool to use. And uh, one of the things I'm real passionate about is just audio in general. As a blind person, I mean, that's, that's my bailiwick. And uh, I, I love the idea of imparting information with people in a multimedia format. So if you're a small business owner, you know, thinking about music, thinking about voiceovers in conjunction with your website uh, is a pretty good idea. There's a lot of cool ways to impart information. You can do multimedia platforms, video, audio, text. It's really, you know, it's pretty good stuff. And lest anyone doubt your, uh, your ability or credibility to speak on small business, yeah. you own your own small business. Yeah, that's right. Uh, what I have basically is a recording studio where I'm uh, the owner, the sound engineer, and the producer. Uh, I do have people that work you know, with me in the studio, of course, that, that help facilitate things because when you've got you know 15 20 guys trying to load in it takes more than one person to sell the mics up you know? <laughs> and i also do uh, radio and tv in my hometown promoting independent music and then i also uh, am a music educator so i do a lot of master classes um last year i was in the uk doing some master classes uh 
I've been done some stuff in uh, Southern Mississippi, uh, the University of Southern Mississippi, and of course I'm professor of music technology at Mercer University in Macon. And then um, I do a lot of marketing and branding and something else I call music mentoring, which is to help. And this is when we talk about music business. There's that wonderful word business in there. And the reason so many talented people don't make it is because they don't handle the business side. They want to just be creative. Now, I understand. I understand feeling that way. Like, I just want to play the guitar. I just want to sing. I don't want to worry about this business stuff. But at the end of the day, you have to. And you're responsible for your own career. It's your responsibility. Or and someone. You need to find someone to worry someone about Someone that can help for you. you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and, but, you know, choosing that right person is a, is a major undertaking and, and a very difficult one. But what I was going to say, you know, is that, that basically, yeah, I, I have a, a sort of a umbrella company that encompasses all these different aspects of what I do. But it's all music related. Uh, do a lot of public speaking and inspirational speaking about living a successful life. I had a brain tumor, which is the reason that I'm blind. Yeah, at 18 months? Yeah, 18 months old. And uh, my mother and father said, I, you know, that I just feel that my child isn't, something's not right. And the doctor's like, no, he's fine, he's fine. And then eventually they kept taking me back, and they're like, oh, there's a brain tumor here. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, obviously I had to take it out. But what happened was the brain tumor grew. It wasn't cancerous, but it grew at such a quick rate. It was a fibrous. Yeah, it, it basically crushed. The way I think about it is it sort of crushed a lot of the wiring on the inside of my head. Uh, and so I, um, you know, that's why I'm blind, and I have some other issues as well. I have uh, no endocrine system. So, uh, for example, if I get stressed or tired or whatever, my body, there's no biofeedback. My body says, make more adrenaline. I don't actually have adrenal glands. So your thyroid is? Have no thyroid. You have no thyroid. No thyroid, okay. yeah. So that, help, that hurts with your heartbeat and a lot of yeah, things. Yeah, it, it, well, this is, the, this is one of the things. I, 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 don't, I like to talk about these, these health struggles only to emphasize the point that I have done my entire life exactly what I wanted to do. Might have to do it a little differently, but I always make sure that I do what I want to do. And if, if, if because, like, for example, when I tape my TV show, it's like 7 o'clock in the morning. Well, for me to get there and feel good and get all my medicines in me, gotta be there at five. I get there at 4. Yeah. yeah. And, it, it, you know, and it just gets me, you know, I, so you just plan for that. You, know, you just plan for that. So that can translate. We all have some sort of block or some sort of limitation or some sort of challenge we have to overcome in our business, in our career, and mine happens to be predominantly, you know, physical. Uh, but but the basic principles of success apply to anybody and, and apply to what we talked about a few minutes ago was follow your heart, do what you know is right. If you are firmly convinced, if you have a passion and you just are totally on fire for an idea, then you're doing the right thing. May not work the first time, may not work till the fifth time. But there's been a lot of people that people thought were nuts that are now not only super successful materially, but also super innovative as well. I mean, they were innovators. Right. Now, as you know, we just got we, – we went through a major recession. Some people call yes. it a depression. And small business owners just got pounded. It was bad. <laughs> yeah, it was very bad for a lot of us. And we got worn out. Um what do you say to people that, you know, they have all their faculties and they get worn out? I mean, you get worn out some days, I would think. You know what I do? Um, I, I have two secrets for that. Actually, I have three. And one of them is what my mother taught me as a small child because I, I almost died several times. And, and as a small child, I was sick a lot. Uh, but I want you to know, I went to just a normal, regular school. I didn't go when I was when I was when I was a kid. I mean, you know, uh, I'm 39 years old now. But when I was when I was a kid, there there really weren't schools for the blind and stuff like that. Those things really weren't prevalent, and there wasn't a lot of assistive technology and adaptive technology and things like that when I was coming up. Um, so I just went to a regular high school, a regular grammar school, and we just found ways to make it work. But the thing my mom taught me to keep me from being afraid when I was a small child and I was in the hospital, or I was sick. She taught me to entertain myself, and I'm still doing it. Basically, what I do all day long is music and bad jokes. I just <laughs> I entertain myself, and, I, and then other people I entertain. The, I can do both of those. Uh, see, you're a talented man. I knew, I knew you were a cool guy. But, it's, but that's one of my tools. I, I'll tell you something else I do. Um, I set down a list of goals, and I'm honest with myself about the goals. One of the things I like to talk about is – if you want to be super rich and have a you know a jet plane and a limousine and be you know Elvis Presley, that is okay. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. If you want to have a different career where 
you're doing more the college circuit and you're impacting young people's lives in a, in a way musically. And that's a little bit more where I kind of lean uh, because I just feel more fulfilled that way. That's okay. So my point is I like to have big goals and big dreams, even dreams that some people might say are, are ridiculous or unobtainable. I don't think it's ever wrong to dream big. I think the only thing that's wrong when you start dreaming big is to think you're going to go from playing guitar in your bedroom to being Elvis in a day. So I am a huge proponent for having a three-month, six-month, and 12-month business plan. And I'm talking about music business, but this applies to anything. And I set myself small, obtainable goals so that I don't get frustrated, so that I don't get worn out, and that I, so I can look back and see the progress I'm making. And now, that, do you that's record your progress? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, absolutely. I have a uh, – I, I learned to touch, touch type when I was seven years old, but I have a screen reader that reads back my information. So I have Word documents full of lists and goals and tasks, and I'm very uh, analytical and very task-oriented. And uh, so – and I like to um, – it's kind of a personality flaw, but I, I'm not a very patient person. Um, so in one way, that's kind of a bad thing, but it, it is uh, something I use to my advantage because I like to get things done. I like to get things done quick so I can forget about it and move on to the next thing. And so I use that to my advantage as best I can. Like, you know, when, some, when a client tells me I need something by Friday, man, I got it to him on Tuesday. Yeah. So, you know, because I don't want to wait. <laughs> so, um, but, you know. What? What do you think about music today? The stuff that we routinely hear, it's called popular. What do you think sure. about all that stuff? Well. And uh, and I have a follow-up after you get okay. done with that. This is a leading question, <laughs> Joey. <laughs> As, okay, all right, I got you. <laughs> so, you know, I, I some of the music that's being made today, to me, is a little more what I would call cookie cutter. Um, a, Very a little, factory oriented. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little more beige. Um that's not to say there aren't some great innovators out there in the music business, because there are, but there tends to be a little bit more beige music these days. Now, bottom line, if you enjoy it, it's valid. Okay, so if you like it and it makes you happy, then that's all that matters. But for me personally, as someone who is steeped in a certain aesthetic, someone who's been overly educated and overtrained to do the job, obviously my, my tastes are a little bit more, for lack of a better word, a little more exotic. I like things that are a little less you know, typical. Sure. So, so I, you know, the music today, the only thing I'll say about the music today, sort of, I guess, negative is not the right word, but I, that I would change if I had the control. Um, this is sort of a, uh, I'll try to make this short, but basically back in the early days of recording, uh, we recorded to the acetate or reel to reels. And yep. then what happened was vinyl was the primary method of, of getting, you know, music out there. Most people didn't have the reel to reel machines, uh, uh, you know, the high fidelity real, real machines, vinyl was sort of the mass consumption method. So what you had was a guy named a mastering engineer who would take the vinyl tape and record it to a vinyl master or a glass master. Now, one of the things you might not know about vinyl is uh, you can see vinyl has grooves in the, in the plastic. You're basically scraping the plastic. Yeah, and what, what happens is if the bass is too loud, it can, make, it can make the grooves uneven. The needle can literally jump out of the record. So the mastering engineer's job was to make the transfer from reel to reel to vinyl and make sure that, you know, like the order of the songs made a big difference because sure. the closer to the inside of the record you got, the lower the volume needed to be. You, had, you, could, have more, you could have more dynamic range. In other words, more, more loud spots and soft spots the, the further to the outside edge because there was more room. So anyway, there was a master, that was the original job of the mastering engineer. In the late 90s, early 2000s with the digital technology, what they realized was, hey, we can compress this and make this music super loud. And it was one of those questions of science, science allows us to do it, so we can do it, but the question was not ever asked, should we do it? I do think that today's music's a little overcompressed. I, I think some of the I think beauty, it's overcompressed and overproduced. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I think some of the beauty of the classic albums from the 70s and 80s was that dynamic range. Sure. So, um, yeah. Let me interrupt you for a minute Please because do. you're listening to On the Money, brought to you by Embassy National Bank. This is Joe Moss, your moderator, and we're talking to Joey Stuckey, uh, who is an uh, incredible young man um, and uh, uh, basically a music ambassador. 
uh, small business owner, um, just an incredible outlook on life. We're glad to have him today. My pleasure. But, um, I want to follow up on that because um, what's important about music to our economy? That is a wonderful question that I am glad to answer. Okay, so there's a couple of things we can Why talk should about we here. worry about overproduction of music? Why should we worry about uh, over-commercialization? Why should we worry about uh, decline in music? Why, do we, why should we worry about all that stuff? Well, you know, it's interesting. The, the world we live in is interconnected, and everything affects everything else. And the world has gotten smaller with the advent of things like FedEx and – you know, the Internet and uh, Skype and, and all these things, you know, I can I can disseminate my music to people in the United States and India and Africa just with the push of a button. Sure. So one of the problems we face with the music industry and why we should care about, you know, this this oversaturation like you're talking about it is the fact that if people stop consuming music, uh, first of all, from a spiritual perspective, that's a bad thing to me. But from a, from a money perspective, if they stop consuming music, there's a whole chain of people that get affected. Uh, not only do the musicians and the artists start losing revenue and then losing the ability to make the music, but now you've got businesses like mine, recording studios, that no longer have people recording. Uh, now, my studio, just to give you an example of how my studio is important to business owners outside the music business, when I bring a group to town to come record with me for, I mean, for a serious project where they're going to be there a couple weeks, sure. We facilitate them getting hotel rooms. We facilitate them knowing where to go to enjoy their evening off. We facilitate catering lunches and, and working with all the local businesses around us. And, and also with the local media. So I work, to, I work to get as much press for my clients as I possibly can. So I interface with the local news. I interface with local hotels. I interface with the local businesses, whether it's the taxi cab company, whether it's the local bar down the street. All those people are affected by me bringing people into my studio. Yeah, so let me talk about that yeah. because there are a lot of folks out there that think, well, we should just get music for free. Right. What, you know, what's wrong with stealing this track from my my good friend what's wrong with all that and i if 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 you just take what you said yeah you no one would be willing to record music right if no one ever made any money on music well the thing is you know there is this strange perception that art should be free and that oh it's it's a hobby it's not a real career and that's something we fight a lot as musicians or or visual artists painters sculptors the fact of the matter is, yes, art is something that everyone can enjoy, should enjoy, and it is designed to be consumed by the masses. But if you want the artists you love to keep making the art you love, they got to get paid for that because they got to eat. Gotta get something. You know, they got to eat, man. You well, gotta... in a real small example, back in uh, 1999, I did a CD of a lot of my music, and a yeah. lot of people listened to it. I think I sold uh, 30 copies. Hey, not bad. Um, and that's what people say, but that's a good number. Yeah. Um, but I spent 10 grand putting it together easily and, easily. um, and then another two for the artwork cause sure. it was something I wanted to do. And then a lot of people heard the music, a lot of people, yeah, I yeah. No, a lot. When are you going to do this again? What are you going to do this again? I said, well, I can't cause I can't afford to, I got $300 sitting here in my, or I got, uh, you know, $3,000 in my pocket from sales. Yeah. It's, it's I can't do it. That's right. And, and, you know, that's why I'm really, I have to say, over the last year, I have become a Taylor Swift fan because she has spoken out against Apple Music and Spotify. Sure. Uh, both companies did not want to pay. For example, Apple Music did not, I don't know if you're aware of this, but with the new iOS update, uh, iOS 9, there was a new Apple Music app launched that was kind of a combination of like Pandora, uh, uh, Shazam. And of course, the iTunes Store all kind of rolled into one. They didn't one. want to pay anybody. They were, they were well. What they were doing is they were giving everyone a three-month free trial, and they wanted the artists to not get paid for their music for that three months. And Taylor Swift uh, was one of the most vocal critics of that, and she should have been. I mean, look, if if I choose to give you something for free, that's on me. Uh, that doesn't mean that whoever, like if I, if, like for example, I brought you a, a present today. I brought you a uh, official Joey Stuckey blind man driving thermos 
Uh, <laughs> those cost me about five bucks a piece, and you have to buy, you know, two hundred of them. Sure. And 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 but but I want to give it to you. I want to give. So that's on me. That's my problem. Sure. Um. So, but but because I want to give you something for free doesn't mean that the guys that made the water bottles are going to give them to me for free or. Should they give them? They shouldn't sure. give them to me for free. So, you know, that's the thing. I mean, I think that, you know, Apple Music and, again, Spotify is just – radio, uh, as far as making money, you know, back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, even the 80s, uh, you can make a decent living from radio airplay, um, the royalties I'm talking about. Um, today's money for music is really coming from a different area, and I can get more into that later if you want, but it's really coming from what's called synchronization, which is uh, – Synchronizing music with film and television, sure. and that's the new that's the new sort of uh, gold rush and it's so for the music it's business. It's so hard to track the number yeah. of times your music gets pl you played. And too. that's why you that's why you should join some sort of PRO, which is a performance rights organization like ASCAP, BMI, CSAC, Sound Exchange. Those guys help you track that for like a one time fee. I think it's two or three hundred bucks. Um, and and of course you have to do the paperwork too and help them. But to to kind of answer your question though, you know the fact is like I say, the law. The interesting thing about music law or entertainment law, actually, to be uh, less specific, um, is that back in the day, if you made a if you made a copy of somebody's CD, that's yours, oh, and you yeah, gave yeah. it away, yeah, you weren't breaking the law. Today, it is looked at as theft by taking. So, if I have a CD and you copy it and give it away, you have now potentially stolen from me a source of income, and so it's kind of like you stealing my car. It, it, right, and I had someone give me a drive of music from a radio station that they had gotten a hold of, like 20-something thousand yeah. songs. And uh, I told the guy, I said, uh, I haven't listened to it. I yeah. said, why? I said, because it's stolen property. It's stolen, yeah. And, and, and he it, went, oh, gosh, I didn't think about that. Well, and people don't. And, you know, it used to be that, that there, there weren't many people. It used to be the law. The, the problem is the law is having a hard time keeping up with the technology. Hmm. Uh, and that's that's one of the problems. I mean, only only recently, I say recently, like five six years ago, but only recently did they settle uh, what is when you listen to music on the radio. Is it an airplay royalty? Is it a streaming royalty? Is it a download royalty? You know, they've just recently sort of settled that issue. So um, you know, the, the 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 technology for consumption of music is rapidly outpacing the actual legal protection for intellectual property. Sure. So, but one of the things is, I mean, if most people, most people are, are good people, and j it just doesn't occur to them that they're stealing. Uh, but but the, I will tell you that the law is really cracking down on it, as they should. And Well, they, yeah, I know. you got the music police that will walk into a restaurant. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. And say, you know, show me your license. Well, that's right. You know, if you're, if you're a small business owner that plays music in a public space. Um, they can hit you hard. Technically speaking, you're supposed to have a blanket license to do that. Right, and if you're a music performer, and you go play at a, a restaurant or a bar or, or a venue that supports live music, theoretically they're they supposed, supposed to have it. a blanket license yeah, to allow you to do to that. Have it right. Yeah, yeah. So it's funny because but the so many people don't. The gym I belong to went to totally um, syndicated music because of that reason. Uh, trainers were coming in and playing their own iPad, iPods. Yes, yes. And I think they got busted. Yeah, and, and it, it will happen. And there's actually a large. You know, there are five major record labels now. They all kind of gobble each other up over time. Sure. But there are five major record labels now, and they actually have a lobbying group that they give millions of dollars to called Raya. And Raya actually lobbies the U.S. government pretty hard, and they are really cracking down on this stuff. And, and right. I don't blame them. Listen, we don't have a whole lot of time left, but there was something that we were going to do at the end of the show, I and remember. we're close to that. Yeah. And uh, the first thing that you're going to do – is you're going to pick up that Martin guitar Martin, over there, yes. and you're going to play a quick song. Yes. And then when you get done, uh, what I was going to do is take that guitar from off. you, and uh, I was going to play a song that I'm sure you know, and then I'll sing, and you can probably put some harmony to it. I'll but go it. ahead. Well, this this is you know as a blind man, I feel like it's incumbent upon me to sing this song. Okay, so. Georgia, Georgia, the whole day through, yeah, 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 just an old sweet song keeps Georgia on my mind. I'm talking about Georgia. Georgia, the song of you, yeah, 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 
as sweet and clear as moonlight through the pine. Yeah, yeah. And I said, other arms reach out to me. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. Oh, no, no, no. My turn, right? Yeah, okay. your turn now. Okay. You want to pick or you want to? I just use my little thing. Okay, all right. All right, you want an original or what do you want? I want an original, man. Okay. Uh, all you baseball fans out there. This Ooh, is I'm a, a baseball fan. This is a song that I wrote about uh, the Braves years ago when they kept losing in the playoffs. <laughs> but you have to you love them whether they win or lose, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's called uh, Lord, I'm Stranded. <laughs> Life keeps throwing curveballs Breaking sliders at my feet Running fastballs in on my cold hands Can't get a pitch, can't seem to start a streak <laughs> Lord, I just feel stranded I'm stranded at your feet Can't buy a hit with just one pitch I can turn this thing around I got two outs, Lord, please let me take one deep <laughs> I got two outs, Lord, please let me Take one deep. I got two outs, Lord, please let me take one deep. Awesome. I love it. I love it. And why why is it that as soon as we trade somebody, they start like going crazy good? I mean, Jason Hayward is just doing amazing stuff for the Cardinals now, right? Oh, I mean, but, oh don't forget Brian McCann. Oh, he's I know. He was, he's always been one of my heroes. Yeah, but they're going to have to be paying him, what, $4 jillion a year at some I, point? You know, I, I, it's a good gig if you can get it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, good. I don't mind any of those guys going to a big money town because they were told don't expect a big money with yeah. the Braves. You know, the only, only thing is for me, I, I was never a baseball fan because as a blind person, I, no one really ever explained it to me. And then I got married, and my wife is a huge baseball fan. And I have become just a, a devotee. And now, if I, you listen, I tell you what, I, yes. stay on that. I love listening to baseball yes. on the radio. Yes, it's awesome. And it's, you know what, it's perfect for blind people. I mean, it's perfect for everybody, but I'm just saying it, it's so easy for me to follow. Now, football's a little harder for me to follow because by the time I figure out like, what's happened, like 10 more things have happened. But baseball moves at the perfect pace for me. Um, and That's because it was a radio game it back was, in the day. Exactly. And I love it. And my wife has so many wonderful memories with her father who's passed on uh, with baseball. It's just a real spiritual thing for us. But I, I adore it. And if I could see, I would be totally so you grew out up there with pitching. Skip Carey I, I, and, I would. and Don Sutton. I, I want to listen, you know, I want to meet those guys. You know, Joe and, and Chip are just like the coolest people ever. And I, I would love one day to meet them, shake their hand and say thank you for making I this remember, so much fun. I remember one time uh Don Sutton was in the booth with with uh, Skip. And Amazing they, commentators. And they only let it happen a couple of times. <laughs> it got a little out of hand. <laughs> so, and then after that, I didn't hear that anymore. Yeah. And I and I, ha I saw Sutton 
uh, my wife did some work for him, and I saw Sutton, who was a oh. really nice fella. And I Seems asked like him, nice guy. So why don't you get in the booth with Skip anymore? And he said, uh, uh, Joe, they don't let me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a huge – I've sung the national anthem for the Gwinnett Braves um, – you know, a couple times, and and uh, of course, Macon had the Braves way before, way back in the day, or the for Triple A. Sure. Uh, but uh, but man, I just I love I love our team, and one of my dreams. And you asked me this earlier. I'd like to I'd like to just sandwich this in real quick, if I may. Uh, you asked me earlier, how do I keep from getting t- you know, exhausted or 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 feel like I can't accomplish anything or feel run down? Uh, I set little fun treats for myself and one of my silly dreams that i want is i want to go experience a major league baseball game in every park in north america there you go so far i've made it to three wow <laughs> so have you been to rick uh, uh wrigley field no i so want to i've been to turner field of course i've been to chase field which is in phoenix arizona i was on tour there okay uh, and, and then i've also been to uh mccovey cove up there at&t park to wow. see the Giants oh, oh, you, you yeah, okay. Yeah, I, again, I, I have some friends that live up in in, in uh, well, like my Monterey. Son took, yeah, so. my son took me to to a Wrigley Field. Well, that's that's a classic. I'm really like I'm sort of bummed that I won't ever get to go to the original Yankee Stadium. I know, but uh, I I would love to just. I mean, I just think those ballparks have or Comiskey. so much. Yeah, well, right. I mean, th- these ballparks though have so much history and so much heart because they're about you know win or lose being graceful. And they're about keeping the dream alive. That hey, we're going to make it this year. We're going to make it this year. We're going to make. And that's that's it, man. That's hey, if that if you can't apply that idea to small business, I don't know. I mean, you know, that's something you got to have in your heart when you're doing anything. Well, we've only got uh, about four minutes left. I want you <laughs> to talk to the small business owner out there yeah. who feels a little overwhelmed, yeah, a little beat up. Uh, margins are compressing. Yes, absolutely. Concerned about the direction of the economy, concerned about the direction of Washington. Yes. Say something to that person. Well, look, here's the thing. Don't give up. And, and just remember that, you know, this this world is fluid. There are going to be peaks and there are going to be troughs. And what you have to do is, I like to say, plan, expect the best and plan for the worst. So, you know, have that business acumen, you know, be honest with yourself, be realistic about what's happening to you, look at what things are working, look at what things aren't working, and certainly use that that knowledge that you've gained as a business owner to figure out, hey, you know, I'm spending $5,000 putting advertisement in the newspaper. Clearly, my audience is not reading that paper. Maybe I should shift it to radio. Maybe I should shift it to TV. Maybe I should do more internet broadcasting. Maybe I should be out doing more business fairs and networking. Maybe I should join more social organizations like the Chamber of Commerce or whatever. Sure. But but I mean, you you'll find you will find your niche, and once you do, that's when things get better. But you know, remember, I mean, conventional wisdom says it takes about two to three years for a new business to break even, and then typically you start making making money. And look at where you're spending your money and see where you can tighten your belt. I, I've had to, and you know. As a child, my parents had a lot of uh, uh, disposable income, uh-huh. and I just got used to, uh, you know, just sort of like uh, being able to do whatever I wanted to do. Sure. When that 2008 uh, sort of crash, for lack of a sure. word, came, I had to start. I was so used to having an extra disposable income myself, I had to start really tightening my belt. And it was like, oh, I can't buy the new microphone that I feel like I need. Kind oh, of I can't a bad buy- feeling. It's it? annoying. <laughs> I wasn't able to upgrade my studio, and I That's, still haven't. Been. Well, you, you know, I know how you feel, but you know, I, I just go for those things that I feel okay. This would be nice to have. This is essential to have. You know what I did? I went back to the fact that uh, what a friend, Ken Gregory, who runs oh, the studio, he's great. Yeah, Ken is, Ken produced my CD. By he the is way. fantastic. Yeah, he's a great man. Um, Absolutely. But and we've had him on the show before, as a matter of fact. But he taught me. He said, Joe, the essence of any recording software Mm -hmm. is that mic getting a good sound on that file. And that's a beautiful, that's actually a beautiful segue to kind of close out what we're talking about because basically go for real quality in what you buy for your small business and, and buy something that's a workhorse and something. I also believe, try to set yourself apart. The fact of the matter is I am blind, nothing I can do about it. I use it to my advantage. Hey man, I'm all I'm doing when I do your music is listening. That's it. You got a big set of walking ears, and that's part of my appeal. That's part of the reason you want me to produce your record because I have a unique perspective. So sure. use those things. Sure. And life may be a little dark, but don't ever give up on your core value. 
That, um, exactly. I yeah, mean, that, you may that's need to a real adapt, problem. But you need to really stick with your core. You know, values. it's so true. You know, one of the things, and this this translates to business as well. What this makes is pr- you you? Well, that's exactly what I was going to say. This translates to business as well. But I feel like in today's music business, with the way we're interconnected through social media, people start are, are caring more and more about the person behind the music, and they feel like they have the right to interact in that person's lives. Now, I'm not condoning cyber stalking, but what I'm saying is that you know, being yourself and being your genuine person and letting that shine through your work is something that can really help you and build you a dedicated base uh, of, of people to turn to that want your services, whether it's music or something else. And, you know, uh, w- when my wife and I got married, we sat down and had a very honest discussion with each other about what our core values were and what we expected from one another. And don't be afraid to do that with your business team, with your business partners, with all those people. You'll have that honest discussion and say, look, this is what I believe. This is what I'm going to hold to. If you don't feel that way, I wish you the best of luck. But I want to surround myself with people that share that core value. I think that's a wonderful business thing to do. I think I think it's a, a wonderful thing personally to do. But I think it's a really important part of having a strong sure, business team sure. as well. Um, boy, this has been a great show. Joey, thank you so much. My honest pleasure. Boy, I really I'm appreciate it. I'm honored to have you here. You've been uh, very helpful in thank terms you, of uh, direction, motivation, a lot of, a lot of good stuff. Um, you know, I want – I remembered a quote while you were just talking about that and uh i'll use that to finish the show is uh i saw it on a i don't know where i saw this was this a bathroom wall quote no (laughs) i think it was a copy room quote but i thought it was wasted in the copy room but anyway (laughs) life is a journey perilous indeed but men were not built for safe haven i love it so you know the whole idea is life's a journey it's going to be tough but uh you know enjoy it enjoy the journey you know, part part of the fun's getting there. Yeah, it really is. But um, anyway, that's our show for today. Uh, this has been on the money, the number one small business show on Business Radio X, and very quickly, the number one music show on Business Radio. <laughs> X. Uh, we've really enjoyed having Joey Stuckey on, and Joey, I want to really have you back. There's a lot of stuff we can talk All about. Eight, I'm I'm at your service anytime. Good. On the money is presented by Embassy National Bank, and you can find us on Twitter at on underscore the underscore money, and then the number one one uh, you can listen to our shows at any time uh, at on the money dot business radio x dot com and like uh, other other shows that have to bleep out the music at the end because it wasn't licensed uh, we're not going to do that we're going to keep that on there for you um, our shows are available for free on itunes and you can also watch us at uh, on our youtube channel at business radio x dash Gwinnett studio so for the next time until the next time this is joe moss uh from embassy national bank and joey like i said it's been wonderful having you and uh everybody be careful out there and as we always say leave fear in the back seat so until next time we'll see you later 